Um, so our next speaker um, has, I've, I've found, I've been in situations where I think I know a topic inside and out. And our next speaker comes up and it's just this general topic and just throws a wrench in my understanding because she just looks at it from a different perspective. And, um, and she's done that with all the talks that I've ever seen her do. Um, so um, regarding the talk that she's gonna be giving tonight, which is based on in, creating an insider threat program. Um, I remember going through this with one of our customers and it was pretty basic. It was more of a technology solution, but I'm looking forward to what our next speaker, Tess, has to say on this topic because I'm sure she, she, she has some insight that I haven't thought of. So with that, I would like to introduce Game Master Tess. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? The title of my talk is Everything You Wanted to Know About Creating an Insider Threat Program But Were Afraid to Ask, or Everything I Needed to Know About Creating an Insider Threat Program I Learned from Playing Dungeons and Dragons. So the following is actually how I explained this to a friend of mine, an old mentor who suddenly had to throw a program together, and I met him at Starbucks, and this is what I told him. But a little about me first, some rumors, and the truth. And thank you to my patrons. Anyone who wants this talk or the slides can get it off my website later. It's free to everyone in the community. I always give back. Hail, adventurers, welcome to Unsecuria, a vast kingdom of plenty with a grizzled old ruler. After many years on the road adventuring, you think this might be the place to settle down, except for a few not quite so minor problems. You've taken a romp around the city, hit the bars and brothels, made contacts with the black market merchants, seen what less than masterwork weapons the militia are packing, and by Paylor's shiny golden nether parts, this place needs help. There are whisperings of gray dwarves undermining the trade routes across several counties, half-orc rebels looking to steal state secrets for a rival kingdom, and we won't even talk about what the halflings are up to. Just try to get your privy business done before nightfall. According to your sources, the king knows next to nothing about any of these threats, and if you're going to make this kingdom the opposite of its namesake, you've got to pitch your plan and fast. Are you up for one last adventure? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's begin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting leadership buy-in. Convince the king. The king needs your help. The kingdom is in peril, and it needs a serious overhaul where its internal security is concerned. Getting the king to realize that he needs you and your plan of action to secure the kingdom can be a hard sell. A formalized insider threat program requires organization-wide participation by multiple departments. It will usually have a director, charter, or other policy document that establishes the program, documented statements of its mission, scope, and authorities under which the program will operate, a defined governance structure that helps produce, review, and approve the program standards, practices, and operating procedures, and a dedicated operating budget. Thus, it is critical to have the support of senior leadership all the way up to the king or the CEO. <laughs> Identifying key stakeholders, who needs to be included and why. Guild leaders, high priests of the temples, master merchants, captains of the guards, and key community leaders are all the same as what you would call your key stakeholders in any advancement in security policy and procedure. These people can be great resources for assistance as well as backup if you're receiving pushback from leadership. These are the people who stand to lose the most if everything falls apart, so let them know what's at stake and what can be done about it. There has to be a party leader who is responsible for supervising this quest. This individual should be senior enough within your organization to be able to marshal the necessary people and resources. You'll want to identify individuals from key areas of your enterprise to participate, and depending on the size and scope of your organization, they may include personnel from human resources, security, IT, training, legal, as well as your frontline managers and supervisors. 
Sometimes individual indicators are not considered a problem, but when coupled together and reviewed may indicate an issue. So make sure you build a strong party with a wide variety of skill sets and backgrounds. Identify your crown jewels. All that glitters is not always gold. A kingdom is like a company with a lot more to protect than chests of gold in the treasury. Material goods and services, citizens of the realm, proprietary spellcasting technology, and state secrets are just some of those things that are of potential value to your adversary. Try to identify and triage your crown jewels. These are materials, personnel, or information that if stolen or destroyed would hurt, cripple, or ruin the enterprise. This could include unique products, formulas, production techniques, software, algorithms, code, and client information. Remember that it's important to denote what makes the crown jewel vulnerable. Is it available on an IT system? If so, are there any controls on who may access the system? If it's not on an IT system, similar questions need to be asked so you can kind of decide what steps need to be taken. Do you share that crown jewel with neighboring realms or alliances? What controls do they have in place? Keep in mind that it's important to revisit this exercise and reassess your triage of what is considered a critical asset because the kingdom is a living and breathing, constantly changing and evolving environment. Don't consider this a one and done exercise. Assessing personnel management practices. How do the leadership in the organizations of the kingdom lead? Are they taskmasters or are they a little too lax? Do they keep meticulous notes and consult the everyday worker, ensuring that even minor issues are handled? Or do they just let the businesses, guilds, or organizations do their things? How your management team leads counts for a lot and can make or break the line of communication between staff and leadership. It can also result in a minor level security incident escalating into something much more serious. Additionally, you'll want to review all management practices for individuals who may be provided access to information, IT systems, and facilities to include consultants, contractors, and business partners. Perform background checks. At a minimum, references, previous employment, place of residence, and education should be checked and verified. Checks should be done on prospective employees and business partners, as well as outside consultants and contractors. Conduct periodic rechecks on employees. Staff circumstances can change over time, and reviewing areas such as workplace behavior can help spot issues that could ah, raise flags. <laughs> Uh, consider non-disclosure agreements and non-compete clauses in work agreements. This puts employees and others on notice that your information is proprietary and should be protected. Remember to consider that with access to your crown jewels or work roles, this could potentially put certain people at risk of being targeted and ensure adequate security awareness training has been given to them to keep them aware of the threat and the risk landscape. Develop clear termination procedures <laughs> to banish or behead. <laughs> Firing one of the gate guards after his 10th time being tardy and drunk at that might not be too worrying an affair, but what about when you find out your chief spiritual advisor has been slipping sleeping potion into the chambermaid's tea for less than honest intentions? When someone in a respected position does something that earns them a spot on the bread line down on the docks, there is the potential for vindictive actions to be taken. Having a clear and concise plan of action to mitigate any potential fallout from letting an employee go is important and prudent. I highly advise creating a checklist for termination actions. When an employee, consultant, contractor, or business partner is let go or resigns, this will ensure consistent procedures are in place to protect the security of the organization, the crown jewels, and the workforce. An insider can do just as much damage in the 30 to 90 days after leaving as in the time prior to their departure. These procedures can include, but are not limited to, a close review of the departing employee's network activity within a defined time frame of departure, such as 30 days, uh, exit interviews to determine the employee's frame of mind and any potential risk they may pose, termination of access to facilities, changing locks and alarm codes, deletion of network accounts, including their remote access ability. Remember, even if they didn't take anything with them, they still could have a lot of knowledge in their head or perhaps bear grudges upon which they might be tempted to act upon if disgruntled. Engage your workforce. Everyone from the lowliest guard patrolman to the guild leaders have a part to play in securing the kingdom from those with ill intent. But more than that, they have to be trained in what to do if they find trouble afoot. 
Having a plan of action that is not only realistic, but also easily enacted is crucial. Employees should understand the potential damage insiders can inflict on the organization, especially to its reputation and future prosperity. Their jobs, and in the case of certain federal regulations such as ITAR, the Protection of Classified Information, or PII, their very freedom and financial security are also at stake. Preventing serious damage due to an insider threat should be a well-publicized effort in your organization, and employees at all levels should be part of the process of protecting the company's crown jewels. Develop a communications plan to educate your workforce about any changes in policy or procedures instituted, and these changes need to be clearly communicated to the entire workforce so they understand the course of action is being done for them and not to them. Create a mechanism for employees to provide feedback, to convey any concerns, or provide suggestions. And additionally, be sure there's a mechanism for employees to quickly and anonymously engage leadership or security to report a potential threat. Identify what is or what should be normal access across the organization so abnormalities can be easily identified and addressed. And then engage with the workforce to create a culture of awareness of everyone's role to protect the crown jewels, the company, and their jobs. This is the part y'all been waiting for. Review IT systems. <laughs> y'all are like, is she going to do anything technical? Review the IT systems for security and vulnerability. So from the ground up, see where your defenses are rooted. Walls, guard posts, patrols, vaults, access to secure areas, and everything that goes into the kingdom's security. What fail-safes, if any, are in place in the event of an invasion or covert intrusion? Your company needs to have a clearly defined process backed by relevant IT systems to meet applicable and required security standards. Any system connected to a crown jewel needs to be protected not only from an external adversary, but also from an insider threat. Can employees log into the internet? Do they need to have remote access, and what are they doing with it? Who has email? Can they attach files, and is there a limit? Where globally is your information stored? Depending on the size, scope, and criticality of the IT system, you may wish to log and monitor all user activity on the system consistent with applicable privacy laws. I'll go fast. Engage your privacy experts. Make sure to stop by your local privacy guild and enlist their services. A good <laughs> privacy expert is like a good wizard. Their primary abilities are going to be research and manipulation of the law. The exact nature of the manipulation of the law depends on what fields of law are included in the campaign. Um, a privacy expert will help ensure policies are consistent with current privacy laws and protect the rights of your workforce. And remember that pr privacy laws can differ between countries, but even between different U.S. states. And so you definitely want to have an expert on staff that's going to help you with this. Employee buy-in to your program is most likely going to be contingent on their belief that their privacy is being respected. Putting your information into context, that handsome fellow in the tavern may be simply a dashing rogue bent on charming everyone with his dazzling smile, or he could be secretly plotting the seduction of one of your key security guards in order to weasel his way into your vault. It's important to put behavior, incidents, and intelligence into context in order to ensure that you do not overlook an existing threat or overreact and imagine one exists. And finally, test your security posture. Conduct war games between various areas of the kingdom. Take your party and test defenses of the towns and cities and capital. What potential damage could be done and where would it likely be directed? Make it an everyday expectation that the guards and gates and civil servants of the kingdom can and will be tested on their readiness of attack or intrusion. And on top of that, give them skills and abilities to do so and reward a job well done. If necessary, make a stop by the local thieves guild or espionage clan and enlist their services. See what they can find out, how deep the vulnerabilities and threats go, and where they feel the most damage can be done. Insider threats can seriously degrade an organization's ability to fulfill its mission. The loss of intellectual property and proprietary information can even impact an organization's ability to survive, as well as considerable pain and inconvenience to innocent clients or customers that trusted you with their data. Any organization, regardless of size or complexity, can fall victim to an insider threat. You stand in the warm breeze as the sun sets, gazing out upon the kingdom, and you know that even though it is impossible to ensure that everything is always 100% protected and secure, you now have a sound plan to enable you to assess your vulnerabilities, identify threats that could take advantage of them, mitigate those vulnerabilities, and reduce your risk profile. Until our next adventure.
Thank you. Good night. Stickers. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, for just so you know, I have my Shmukan barcode in the middle, and instead of the DM stats, I have all the cheat sheets for like SQL injection, like everything, Metasploits, all on the inside. So, can we give that away as a prize? After I enter it in the barcode contest. Okay. <laughs> So anyone who follows me on Twitter, this is what I was talking about when I said I'm a dork. So, um, so did maybe time for just one question. Did anybody have any? All right. All right. I, it's actually a multi-part question. Okay. So what role do you see for the drow healer in the organization? <laughs> and what I mean by that is that it's like the dark elf of patch management or... I mean, what I'm really getting at is the, these hybrid roles that we see that can be quite useful, where somebody who's got skills in the dark arts, maybe a little maudlin you know, sense of, of self. Um, and especially, well, this, is, this is one that's, that's sort of a new emer emergence. It's the, it's the CISO thief with the plus seven charisma who like steals all the budget. Like how, so how do we, how do we, how do we deal with, uh, one, enabling, you know, these kind of power roles where they, they've got the hybrid capabilities, and then two, how do we take away some of the, the, uh, the powers of, you know, th those who have an exceptional charisma or charm uh, attribute um, that, are, that are detracting from the real mission? Well, as a CISO thief, personally, with great charisma, mm -hmm. I think the most important part is when I talked about putting your party together. Identify, identify who your key people are. And it may not be due to a title or due to a budget or due to this. It's going to be due to their skills. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to want those people that can do double duty because people who can speak technical but then also speak business are going to be one of your most valuable assets because they're going to be able to articulate risk. They're going to be able to articulate the return on investment to your key stakeholders and leaders. You can sit there and you can talk about, you know, SQL injection and this and that and Linux and meta and, and, and your key guys with no technical background that are running the place. The grizzled king is going to be like, what? But if you say, sir, like they're coming through the gate, <laughs> he's going to go, uh-oh, we better fix that, you know. So you really want those people that can do double duty mm -hmm. on your team, and you want to keep, or, sorry, <laughs> you definitely want to use that to your, uh, to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Did I answer the question? Yes. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it judging time? You should judge. It's judging time. Judge. Chief Justice, Chief Justice Grax. I've been tweeting and <laughs> first of all, I love the theme. Love the slides. The slides are beautiful. Now, at first I was thinking like, you know, that this was an issue, but there was a lot of reading. Um, but then I remembered back to my teenage years at summer camp that that's how this game was played. So, <laughs> But I think, Tess, that you did an awesome job and just such a colorful way of presenting a very mundane topic. So thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So... Um, now you are familiar with my judging style. I shall begin. So plus one for uh, being a D&D &D PhD. Right there. Plus one. Yes. Uh, plus two for the actual amazing and beautiful costume. And I really like the, I mean, I'm partial to hoodies. So that, you know, it spoke to me. Um, yeah, so that was plus two for the costume. Plus one, actual game master. That was actual game mastering happening there. Uh, minus two for the reading, but I would like to say that I would love to see this as a webcast. Who, who would love to see this as like a webcast that lives and is durable? I think that would be a great format. Um, yeah. 
Um, and then plus one for the phrase proprietary spellcasting technology. I enjoyed that. That was, that was it, it caused me pleasure. Um, <laughs> uh, plus two, because thine roofie reference as a cause for termination, I, I would applaud that one. Yes, absolutely. That was the sleeping potion one, yeah. Um, and then minus one for running long. So if you were adding up this up at home, it was plus seven, minus three for a total score of four by my very scientific methods of judging. Yeah. So I see an 800 series NIST publication in the making. <laughs> we could do our first, um, our first one um, streaming instead of, you know, a, a PDF or something. Um, I thought the costume was great. I think the plain language for um, people to really understand the importance of what you're talking about and why it matters was, was really quite very, very well done. Um, the only thing that I feel like there were a couple of steps in your program that sound a lot easier as you talk through them than they would probably be to implement. And I'm not sure that that would get across to some of the senior policymakers as you think about um, the, the necessary capabilities to really make this happen. One example of that is identify abnormalities. And, and sort of as a one-liner, it's, it's, um, it sounded good, and it needs to happen, but there was no emphasis, and this is really hard, it's going to take some tools, some technology, and some smart people to make that happen. So anyway, any, so I thought you did a really good job. Thank you. Yeah. I'm not as clever.